Now you just got a behind the scenes look at the players giving post-match interviews after a phenomenal battle between DRX and Rogue from day one, brought to you by OnePlus. But now, DRX faces a new opponent in GAM Esports. And we're gonna start on the side of GAM here, particularly looking at two players, Kiaia and Levi, as core components to their wins uh, throughout the year, and hopefully a win here against DRX. And I know that might sound crazy after seeing how well Kingen uh, and how well Pioshik played, but I will still insist upon this being the main entry into this match for Gam. I think Kiaia in particular on his Camille has been the main reason why in this game we saw them even have a shot against yes. Rogue, and they had to divert a lot of resources to keep him down and to keep him from being too big an impact. And this is where we started to see the pop-ups, right? The picks that happened, but especially in this fight as well, he was so good at finding access into the back line, working with Levi, who gets the steal, to get onto the carries of Rogue, make them sweat and make them very uncomfortable. And the fact that he was able to do this consistently speaks wonders to Kiaia's pressure throughout this game and why you will have to fear this man when you come into this game against DRX. Now, it's nice to know that they have the makings of a win, but they've yet to put a win on the board so far. So we're looking for them to get it over the line. But Kiaia, as we mentioned there, an absolute pop-off performance on that commute. This was in a loss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, this was in a loss, right? You can... You can... Even the 100% kill participation. How often do you see a top laner? A, a with 100 a kill to Camille at that. Yeah, top exactly. laner alone, and then you put them on Camille, and you expect them to be there all the time when you're fighting? Very rare. Yeah, it's absolutely absurd to see how good of a game Kiaia had. And as we said, I think Levi was instrumental to setting him up with some of those dives on the top side. And I expect this to be a very similar story for Gam today. Now, on the other side of the coin, we've got DRX, who, of course, did come away with a very phenomenal win uh, early on in the tournament, but then fell down to Rogue. So I'm kind of wondering how we parse through both the victory and the defeat to figure out what went wrong. So the biggest thing for DRX was that they were actually fighting on all cylinders. Usually, as we see again, the amazing play from Barrel, this is a team where three out of the five players look great. Kyoshi and King and just need to be serviceable. Or if they're playing Juon, Juon. But this was one of the very rare games that any DRX fan will learn not to trust because everything went well for them. Piyoshi actually did look incredible. Um, and I think that he is going to have to show up again if they want to have a dominant performance against Gam. And I think for Piosik as well, like he was instrumental to covering a lot of the issues that we saw from DRX against Rogue, right? Yeah. The bot lane being the focal point here. We saw him consistently getting down, interrupting TN, and commanding control of that jungle matchup. And this is what, well, K LCK fans would be hoping happens again. But as we kind of looked at, and you've been highlighting Chronicler, this is kind of a once in a blue moon sometimes scenario for this player. And this is why they run Pioshek. They keep doing it, and I'm 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 gonna tell you why. I'm gonna I'm gonna lift behind the veil. It's because playing Pioshek is like rolling a D20. And if you hit the 20, then you he wins you the you game. You get those stats. Single-handedly. Every time. I've seen him do it against Kenyon. Two World Finals MVPs got clapped by this man and let me tell you, what he's done domestically hasn't always looked up for right. But also, you told me he only needs to be serviceable alongside yes. so the other, those other three members. So, so any, what's the mark? Well, on a D20, what do we have to hit to be serviceable or better? Anything above a 10 is all right. All right, yeah. all right. So we're rolling for half the options here. Let's find out well, what we get a 20. we're going to get on this Does stage today right here. We're going to we, get a 20, okay? <laughs> proficiency advantage? No I problem. Don't know. They're not in their home country? <laughs> It's a 12. 12. It's a 12. It's a 12. Okay. It'll be serviceable. <laughs> oh. Based on this number right here, I don't know how visible that is. The 12. Ah, Boom, could be better. Right there. I mean, not bad. Not bad. Should be okay. That's what we're going to get. That's what I'm talking about. I just about. want to point out to everybody that this guy hit two nat 20s in a row during uh, like off-camera rehearsal, and I'm pissed about it because we could have popped <laughs> That's off. That's not how it's, dice work, now, Dash. Don't explain math to me, okay? You brought bad juju in age. when you rolled two, two nat 20s <laughs> in a row. Um, okay, so we know what? needs to happen for both of these squads. I just kind of want to know straight up from each of you, though, whether or not you think you're really going to get that out of either of these squads. Is it going to be enough for Gam to win through that top side? Are they going to actually bring it? Or is DRX falling into a rhythm, finding that stabilization and allowing those couple key playmakers to bring it home? I think the hardest part for Gam is trying to find that same success through top side. I actually think having Nuguri come into the roster is giving them, uh, sorry, not having that control in top side is giving them a huge amount of opportunities to try and play in towards skirmishes, which is where we saw them have a lot of success in the early stages. Also, I just think Zika Zik has been absolutely phenomenal. Like, that control he's had in the mid lane. Also, having things like the Salas and the Akali that have just been wonderful for him, I think it's going to be very tough. 
I can see Gam do it, but they know have to not only get topside ahead, but also make sure that Zeka and Deft aren't too comfortable in the matchups. All right, there you have it. One final game to close out the first round robin here in the world's 2022, 2022 group stage. That is, is DRX, is Gam Esports, and we got freaking Jat on the call. Thank you very much, and welcome back for our last game of the day. And quick pop quiz, Jack, you're going to know the answer because we talked about it off screen. <laughs> but what is the record of every LCK team in the group stage at Worlds so far? Just, just yell the, out what? the view. It'll be yeah. really easy. What is 2 and 1 plus 2 and 1 plus 2 and 1 plus 1 and 1? <laughs> That's 7 and 4. Yeah. Anyway, okay. every LCK team has ended the first run robin 2 and 1. That means it is literally guaranteed that D-Rex will win this game, and there is no chance of mm. a possible win here for Gam Esports because that's how math works. Yeah, if the one seed goes two and one, the four seed will, will also go two and one. Yeah. It's just math. Of course. Yeah. It's a case. Yeah, thank you. See, now you're booing me, which is probably better than booing G2, so thank you. That's actually probably an improvement over what we did a couple days ago. But it's going to be a fun game here because I, I do want to see a banger, right? Zero and two, obviously, oh, yeah. not to start quite. They want DRX, of course, would love to join their countrymen at a two and one start, which would put every LCK team in first or second and the chance of getting topping their group and making the, the 4X semifinal brief, you know, which is, I think, what everyone's looking for here. Azir and Kaylin off the side from Blue Sejuani, banned away by DRX. Yeah, also real quick, if Gam wins this, then not every group will have an 0-3 team. That's true. Right? Otherwise, every group will kind of have close to the same pairing at the bottom. So anyway, we'll see. We're in a draft. Yumi banned, as I think we will see throughout the rest of this tournament. And yeah, high priority there as well. A lot of Gam fans, good to see. And Maokai is indeed going to be banned away. Kiyaya has been playing exclusively fighters on the top side. The thing has played much more towards the tank style. Sejuani has actually been played by him, though his team banned it away. Nar also for him. No Aatrox allowed. First pick. Ooh, a Graves again for Levi. Yeah, I'm trying to think if this is like the most updated list of OP champions we've seen banned. Mm. Like day two, Azir was winning all the games, so now he's kind of entering the ban table. We saw Yumi get a bunch of bans, then became perma banned. Aatrox was the play in thing that became perma banned. Yeah. Right? This feels very kind of on point of if I had to pick the six most powerful world champions, it would almost be these six bands. I actually kind of agree with you. I think that's actually a really good lineup there. But as you let the time tick down, Silas gets to come back through. Zeka exclusively on melee champions in the group stage itself. When you count playing, there's more going on there. He yeah. had an Azir game, but otherwise, I mean, the man is melee. He is a melee enjoyer, yeah. for sure. Akali, Silas, even when he was in the LPL, melees were his jam. Does Yone in there. Yeah. Azir's the other one, but obviously that's banned away. Ari occasionally. Oh, but we get Kindred into Graves. Marksman again here for Pyoshek, who played by far the majority of their games domestically. Like, far, far more games than Juhan. It was more... It was close to 50-50. In planes, it was 3-2. and two. In group yeah. now it's 2-1. to one. Pioshek is playing more games, but it is interesting that they are still switching back and forth, but Pioshek, again, still playing the lion's share. Yeah, only two Kindred games in LCK Summer, but definitely a big pick of his in the past. And I will also say, even though Graves is usually the preferred marksman jungler, Kindred can match Graves in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So it's a small step down, but definitely one of the, like, actually one of the best Kindred matchups, so to speak. Right, yeah, you, you can evade it upon, but you can also get away from it. You're not gonna get locked down. You always have time to cast the ulti. Or you're gonna come through. Tingen gonna be on Orin duty here, no problem. Was notified. This is now champion 101 as Kindred has been locked Dang. in. So, Jat, you had the spicy hot take in, I don't know, day two or three. Yesterday. Uh, that, yeah, yesterday, cool. That it was the, the best world's meta. It has Ever. certainly been the most diverse by far as Kinder now locked in here as well. I think we're beating the record by eight champions now, picked or bands yep. and counting. We're not even done with the groups. We're not even halfway through groups. Yeah, I mean, uh, the people on the desk were like, that's not that hot a take. I agree with you. I'm like, but no one has said it then. Yeah. Right? We we've had some snoozer world's medals. Yeah. There's definitely been some that haven't hit, but this one has no 100% pick band champions. It has the most unique champions ever. Someone else needs to check if it's the highest percentage of the total champion roster, which has been picked or banned, right. which is maybe a more accurate assessment. The other thing is we've also had more games to this point than I think ever before. The play-in format was modified from last year. There was an extra team in both groups this year, so more games were played. But I don't care, man. 101 is so many champions already and the the top five the, the six champions we're talking about here that are banned like that those are the six as of now but i almost guarantee you as we move throughout the tournament people will realize like 
oh man, like Aphelios is winning all the games or Silas is winning all the games. Right. And I actually do think we're not going to get settled on a meta, maybe the whole tournament. So interestingly, Deft is the one of the only players still playing this fortune here at the World Championship. The signs maybe he's not going to do it after all. Tristana is now the hover, thinking that, you know, Kaisa can be bullied a bit in lane. She's relatively short range. You can even just poking her with like E auto onto a minion, yeah. blow up for like 130. Like, that's decent poke. You can always rocket jump Leona. There is nothing Gam can do surprising enough to preempt Aegis on a rocket jump. So Deft should be permanently safe. The yeah. backline damage is going to be great with Orin buffing it up Marksman. And Jax will come through for Kiaya as the answer to Orin top. I actually don't think that that's that winning of a matchup. It's pretty difficult. Orn is a beef ball early on in the lane phase, so uh, Kiaya will definitely have to scale up a good bit before that pick becomes effective, but it does trigger that they are playing towards side lanes, especially once the Talia comes in. So Talia can be great setup for the Jax or for a Kaisa Leona game. All right, at the very end, I believe that is locked, and it's going to be Rel on the bottom side. So yes, aggro tools are here, Orn is the primary engage. Rel can certainly help, and even if she doesn't start it out, Tristana can just be like, I'm in melee range, press E, and there is a combo to be played. You can cleanse the Zona CC, you can go for hard burst onto the Kai'Sa. There is so much room for, if you get a small edge, you're up a wave, your recall's better, who knows what, you can blow this lane open. Talia on the other side, gonna be answering the mid lane up into Silas. There are quite a few dashes. It's gonna affect Triss, it's gonna affect Rel, it's gonna affect Kindred, and it can even affect Ord. You have, actually, all five targets are good for the Pebbles here in the mid lane. So I like the Talia here a lot. It does fit. It is some magic damage on the roster. Uh, and Leona is the sole front line, basically. Yeah, and also just in terms of the team styles, Levi is a jungler who takes such a large portion of the team's CS and also does such a large portion of the team's damage. Being able to get a Marksman versus Marksman matchup for the players is what Gam wants. But I have to say, like, the team fight composition and synergies that DRX have been able to put together with those yeah. five champions you just saw on the right is immense. It's going to look really spicy in this one. I'm excited to see what happens as we get ourselves on to the Rift. As DRX joined their LCK brethren at a 2-1 and one record. And so doing would push a fourth and final team to 0-3 and three in the group stage game, hoping to step up. I mean, for so many years, we just didn't get to have Vietnamese teams at MSI and Worlds. We're just like waiting yeah. for the chance to get a lot of these players back that we've been seeing and loved watching. Uh, there's still so many fun memories of games in years past. Good to see them back. Unfortunately, have not yet found their footing here in the group stage. Yeah, we've definitely missed out on some international history with Gam not being able to attend some of the World Championships and MSI in the past couple years. It makes it really difficult to kind of gauge their power because yes, they are 0-2, but there's so much variance from game to game in what you can do. So definitely not like that grounded in my opinion of them on the international stage after just two games. So hoping to see an upset, honestly. See what happens here. Would be a one and two record for both teams. Would tie them up at third with a lot to play for here. Minions have spawned. And just chilling over there is Talia. And Deft is going to be the trinket over the wall to spot spicy jungle plays. Yeah, okay. So that'll that'll track the Graves one camp into run around. I like it. Yeah. There are a lot of ways Graves can invade. He can actually invade through Tri Rush and like show up at Gromp. Yeah, interesting. Graves, Jax, and Talia are likely stronger level one than the Silas match. But if they wait long Vision. enough, they can push him off. That's and also, they waited for Talia to walk through. Look at the knockup. Zekka's on the way. Kadi, though, as well. Is it going to be enough, though? He's got to have the chains. Looks for the stun. A lot of damage. Ooh. First blood goes through to Orn. Pyoshik even gets the Kindred mark. And Kiaya can't catch him. Has his stun, forcing the flash away from Kingen. And now wants to fight Zekka a bit more. Knocking oh, the man out, too. They're going to get absolutely everybody down. Running for his life. Talia would love to live. How long till King has another stun, though? How long until everyone else dies? No Zekka way. Walks in, just dashes in. It's already 3-0. What 
a disaster for Gam. DRX walk away with two kills on the Orn, one kill on the Silas, and three assists plus a kindred mark for Piosic. They're going to be a little late to lanes for farming, but boy, do they not care. Oh, this is, this is the game you really love to start at. Levi, I get a blue buff. We're going back, okay? I'm going back. The red buff is mine. I think that's your only choice at this point. You know, it didn't work the first time. He saves Smite as a level lead. Straight up outfights yeah. the Kindred here. He just gets it. I mean, the Smites are both Force 50, but there's no way Piotr can, like, fight this long enough to, like, hope he wins the coin flip. So yeah, says, well you know done. What? It's you. That's, see, that's the key, though. Levi died fast enough to be back on the map to kill blue buff. Piotr got to recall to get his health. It's uh, the tempo death. Okay, nice stun though. Good good job short chaining that barrel. Basically just melee range uh, dismount functionally and able to land the stun to keep the damage from going any farther. Look at this jungle gap, seven CS to two. Wow, yeah, <laughs> extreme. Sweeps out the ward for good measure. Takes out most but not all the chickens. That camp is still gonna be down for a while. Yeah. Uh, blue, red, raptors will not give you level three. It's gonna take a little bit for that one, but we can watch this again. Yeah, I mean, this was all patience from DRX. So Piosic doesn't show, so in theory he could be anywhere. But then also, like, Gamp is going to be pretty confident in this fight. Like, Kingen actually lands a knockup with every one of his E's. And the big thing is that Zekka actually beats the Chalia to this spot, which is very unexpected. They're so close to getting that first kill. Triumph, Triumph. Heal comes in for Piosic. He's still able to contribute throughout this whole fight as well. Like, just so many extremely close things. Getting the double knockup the second time. Kingen playing this like an absolute monster. And it allows DRX to chase through for the additional kill. But to your point, Freak, like, the amount of time they spent out on this map, the waves have been met for quite some time. And by the time the final kill is completed and Piosic wants to rekill, like Levi's already back at blue. So he's gonna be okay experience wise. It's just the gold is going to hurt later. Probably around the first or second item break point is when it's really gonna matter. In terms of the power now, it doesn't make a massive difference to the game. Walking around, seeing what's up. Gets the bottom scuttle here on the Kindred side. Says, okay, you didn't take Krugs. Assumes red is gone. Doesn't know for sure, but Think has the read that's happening is already it is the first mark goes to Gromp. The, when, when there's only one, so like when you have zero strikes, it has to be on, I believe it has to be on uh, the Scuttle Crabs. But with one mark, it'd be Scuttle Crabs or Gromp and uh, uh, kind of rolls low. You know, we had the 12 get rolled, uh, yeah. which uh, I feel like you must have some negatives on that one or the AC is really high because I feel like, you know, a 12 should be good enough to get a two out of three. <laughs> Kindred Mark rolling is something that uh, mere mortals can't understand, but Kindred Masters know it very yeah. well. Yeah, the, the breakpoints were in a patch a while back, so like, if you go back far enough, you actually know like the exact formulation of, of when they were where, but yeah. ultimately, yeah, rolls low on this one. Had a chance at a at a mark on the correct side. Doesn't happen there. That's top scuttle, of course, was taken by Graves anyway. Yeah, there's also some like really interesting interactions about like leaving camps up because sometimes it like yep. more likely puts it in the space where it's going to be securable by yourself. So I don't know all those optimizations, but Kindred Veins definitely do. It's a very complex mark system. Yeah, I know a little bit about it. So like if, if someone takes, like let's say both scuttles are up, right? Yeah. Because oh. we're, we're, okay, yeah, we got to die. die. Hold on. Zekka, level five. Flash over the walls. They did blade stun. They got to have the burst and they do. Kill goes over. Treasure Hunter, money to Levi. And, and this is the type of stuff that Gam really need to do in the next say four or five minutes before first minutes can come through because like I said, the early kills don't doom the early game. They actually just doom you later if you don't make any moves to come back. So really great job by Levi counter jungling early and by the whole squad there to get the dive on his end. But yeah. Getting your stacks going. So yeah, the, the Kinder Marks, um, let's say it's like both Scuttles wrap, right? We're doing, you know, 315 yeah. and, and you coin flip wrong. And it's like, ah, okay, Grace Path top side, get Scuttle. If you leave it up, it's around 30 seconds, I think, for when a mark is like taken from you, Going then it'll pick a new spot. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, well, I'll just come back to my scuttle at 30, and right. then it's mine. Instead of instead of clearing both of them, waiting two and a half for scuttle to respawn, yeah. and then hoping to win that one. Well, he's got this raptor spawn, actually. That's Enemy nice. raptor spawn, already at two. Does this, put, this puts him at three. No, that, that, that's, this is the first one he's gotten. Oh, like, this is two. Post PvP, okay. this is number two. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, because he killed the big one first. Got like, it. I smited got it, it's mine, okay, we're good. Moves on from there, so two stacks here. Four is the first breakpoint. That's where you get the attack range and, and a lot of the big stuff there. Uh, it's every three afterwards, so four, seven, ten is the progression. Under the turret right now is this Kai Cetrasana. Definitely, I would say, more of an early game champion. And with the pressure and everything else, with the CS dropped here by style, it's going to be an 11 CS lead and a pretty rough recall. Cristiano's actually very good at crushing cannon waves because 
Oh, look, we blew up the entire wave. We got to use the dematerializer from our support. Pretty much full pace on this one, but Style realizes that. Says, okay, we'll stick around and feels yeah. like he's not going to die to a wow. tower dive. We've been talking about other stuff, Freak, but this is this has really gotten out of hand. <laughs> like, yeah. Tept is up 16 CS and two plates. Uh, Trist definitely can outshove Kaisa, but there was a huge time where it was Kaisa Trist meta. These two champions are kind of meant to match each other. Yeah. Not necessarily to go like this, so huge shout out to Deft and Barrel for playing this first seven and a half minutes of laning phase this well. Yeah, a lot of it is style is dropping CS under the tower. This can be some level of pressure, but it also could be just not playing the, the last hits correctly. And he's been locked under his tower so long, he's got more than enough for Noon Quiver. At Noon Quiver, you basically can't miss CS under tower anymore unless it gets yeah. really just like screwed up somehow. But it's like, if I recall, I lose a cannon wave. Yeah. So I'm gonna stay and lose half a cannon wave. And Deft is happy sitting Doran's Blade versus Doran's Blade for as long as possible, especially when he's consistently shoving the wave in and getting small little chunks every single time he pushes in. And yeah, Style can't even touch the wave, so Deft is just gonna, he would literally be here for 40 minutes if this is the way the lane <laughs> state was gonna stay. Obviously it's not gonna go that long, but that's his mindset. Yep, so it would go down everything else. Levi would like to fight for the scuttle. He's got a friend in his back pocket. Piosha can't jump around, which means the stun's gonna land. Level six though, pops guilty early. But at this point, don't you feel comfortable there? Smite flash still available, could fight for the Scuttle Crab. At this point, the I plus Smite, if it's an upgrade to Smite, would kill it. It's lower and lower. It's just about now it's gonna be in Smite range, basically. It's not an Wanted to, to smite. preempt. And there we go. So, yeah, auto puts it at 120. Was trying to preempt, like, ah, if you hit the I, the ult will steal, we got a chance, doesn't happen. Good job by the roam. Ord comes down, Silas comes over. And the first Herald will be claimed by DRX. 1,400 gold lead with a Herald on inventory. Man, and I can't believe that Style didn't recall there. So he, he's literally had the Leona down bot lane for a while, and he, he's channeling it now, but it's actually going to be interrupted again. Not getting a recall off when your support spent 35 seconds with you. Ah, really just greeting out wave after wave. So yep. Rift Herald goes over to DRX, and tempo continues to be in their favor. I know that feel. He's like got no mana either. He's like been pressing Q and W to like last second or tower. He's like not getting them all, but Deft is like literally full mana. I'm just autoing stuff. Yeah. So we're gonna get this one. Cast gonna be awkward because he doesn't have the AD. This one he finally does get enough with rank four in his Q. It's finally enough that Q plus auto will actually kill Caster safely. So finally he gets most of the wave to himself as he stops hemorrhaging down 18 CS in the lane. Deft might actually go for a recall after this one. He's probably got a boatload of money with three plates, so he's on... What if he's a full Kraken? He's on He's actually a Kraken. Gold. He's on Kraken. Or is it 34? No, it's 32, yeah. So, but wouldn't mind the recall, but he's like, I can get one more, though. Yeah, he's just gonna do this. Like, he will actually do this forever if you let him. Okay, now he's actually gonna recall. So he's gonna clear yeah. this cannon wave and, and reset. Yep. Finally makes the call. Okay, I actually need to buy. I'm gonna be locked in this forever. We'll take the L. We'll lose part of this wave. And the thing is, because Def wants to recall, be like, Wait, Def would really like to freeze this, and he's like, I guess he wants the turret. Yeah, they're just are they just going to give him the turret here with Harold? Oh, with reset? Harold up, it's definitely yours. Doesn't it, even need to auto them this, at this point, but yeah. This is crazy. So he's going to miss a recall timing. This also could have been a Drake timing as well, but yeah. they're going to go for turret damage. They're actually saving the Harold itself. They'll just work yeah. this one down. And, and then they can Harold to another turret, still get plates. They can even give it to Deft after he resets and I love Giga that. accelerate him. This is so I good love, for DRX. I love resetting Deft to top lane with a Mythic and then summoning... Because, like, with Mythic and, and, and Herald, you're definitely killing all of top lane. Tier yeah. One. Okay, how much gold is he resetting with? 4,073 gold. He Almost goes back for his first base. Yeah, there's Kraken. There's Boots 1, Dagger. Yep, there you go. And he buys a Control Ward. Important play. And now you just need everyone to make sure that the wards are there, that he is safe to play top lane. Oh, they're going to go mid instead. Okay, interesting. Giving Zekka the gold here. Okay. It'll. I don't think Zekka's touched the turret, so he has to walk up. 160 each. There you go. Spreading the love a little bit, and actually Def runs out bottom lane, so continuing to, to, to go for Kai'Sa. Not exactly what I expected. I thought they'd keep accelerating the game with Trist, but with that Kraken, they should be able to oh, take full Drake. control of bot and probably take Drake, yeah. It's because of Drake, yeah. That's why he's going back to the side. They actually burned Orn TP back to the top lane outer turret. Yeah, unsurprisingly. Oh, yeah, nice try. Almost just cut him off, but uh, thought he come back. came back down in time, but the wave is pushed in. Would like to see the tempo push with getting this Drake now as soon as possible. They still, yep. actually, they get all their farm, they get bot lane pushed in, they get mid lane pushed in, okay. And then, yeah, I think this is, in retrospect, this is the right call. You it don't is, get to go for top is. lane yet because you want the Drake first. It just, it removes options. It puts an even tighter timer on the game. Yeah, it's it's one thing that actually CoreJJ used to say to me is when you're really far ahead, like, the, the gut is to just get yourself further ahead. 
but you actually need to win the game at some point. So once you have the lead, okay, then take the objective because you're powerful enough and then you can get ahead later. So I like what DRX is doing there, getting the Drake with Death's power. Bolts trying to get some wave cleared, gets to preempt the stun. With that though, Jax is still there. B gonna hold aggro, but Kiaia is too low. Wow. Can't get pushed all the way out. Gotta be careful. He takes a turret shot. He autoed to take a turret shot. Kiaia did not have to die there. I mean, Silas had him in the tri brush. So I think you can argue this is the avoid the assist gold sure. to give the solo kill to Orn, but the dive itself did not go well. Did not, and it's gonna be almost 3,000 now in DRX's favor. Kingen's chilling up there. He's like, I had a 2 0 start to this game. I'm just farming safely against Jax. We got ourselves almost frozen heart. Def now looking at bottling tier two, but isn't able to go for the turret itself. Is wary of Leona and Kaisa coming around. Could have been dangerous enough. Yeah, very clean game by DRX so far, and they're going to absolutely shred objectives for the rest of the game. Double Kraken. Kraken Slayer Kindred, Kraken Slayer Tristana. So nobody will be living long if no. both those carries get to free hit. You get two seconds with Counter-Strike to dodge it all. B, okay, there's the knockup, there's the second stun, then the yep. third, and that is a death, Zekka. Second kill of the game. Yep, so Zekka also getting fed. This is exactly what DRX wants. Orn is just an absolute unit in the top lane already with those two kills and getting the third one, and they're completely taking over this top jungle. This is all kind of setting the stage so that Deft can safely push. They got a deep control ward. He's going to push later. We're watching this dive one more time. They really want to be able to get this bounty away from Orn, and uh, let's try and figure out what happens. So he doesn't land anything with the E, but he does knock up Jax, and... They actually just chain CC, but they go so early that the Talia is not there in time. Yeah. Don't chain the Talia CC, and yeah, you can see here he just may as well die because that yeah, get yeah. him. Yeah. So second half of the ult kept him brittle. So ult two auto W auto just got a million stuns into the jack, which meant there just wasn't enough damage to be dealt. Yeah. He probably was killable without the two kill lead. You know, without steel caps being done, maybe the damage is going to be high enough. But obviously everything else paid forward and. Uh, the one aggressive play we've seen from Gam does not work out. Trying to lie in wait for Deft. Deft, buddy. Yep. Seen the play, it's done, but he can rocket jump it. I like the near sight, and he's like, near sight? That's rocket jump. We're out. Yeah. <laughs> this means bad. Just yep. get away. Yep. Another reason that Trist pick is good, as you mentioned, there's just not much that can interrupt that rocket jump. Even any, any Leona CC is generally able to be buffered and just jump away. Nice job. Gets both halves of... Q-Max, Zekka, and generally speaking, any Silas versus range match, if it's Q-Max, melee versus melee, you max W for the Akali, things like that. And yeah, Everfrost into Q is solid 600 damage off of style, and once again, push off the tower, 35 CS deficit. And despite how bad that has looked, he's still got about as much as mid and top laner who aren't getting the most farm either. Yeah. I think Style has definitely kept his farm up, but he's just had absolutely no presence on the map. Yeah. Right? He's been under his turret the whole game, just trying to pick up the scraps as the turrets are falling again and again. It's it's first two turrets, I think, will quickly turn into first three turrets um, as the second Herald is easily being taken by PO6 Kindred. And yeah, this is this is a very good early game by DRX. Good right now. There's the smite, there's the auto thing for the claim. We are on four Kinder marks, by the way. The breakpoint has been hit. PO is on four marks. And top lane outer, only a few shots left on the minions, but it'll be enough that Death can kill this. Barrow will take his share of the gold, 175 each. Teoshik wants to go for a little bit more. Don't believe this one is marked. Nice try, the seismic shove first could have maybe done it, but Smite guarantees it all the same. Yeah, good time to reset. They got 1,500 gold onto the Tristana as well. Kindred can go back with the Rift Herald. They can even use this to break open a turret or just give them tempo before the next Drake spawns. So it's such a difficult, difficult spot in the game right now for Gam, you know that they want to take big swings and be aggressive, but the big swings they've taken, actually so far at Worlds, have just missed. They had this huge fight that they went for in their first game. They got five for zero aced. This game, they went for this big risky invade, lost three right away. So they just had to play all these games from the back foot, which just makes aggression so much more difficult. But alas, they group five in River, and they are looking to throw down. Words over the wall, 15 seconds until Ocean Drake comes up. At this point, sure, maybe you try. Deft is not on two completed items, so if Style has Kraken, you are 
equal on completed items. Down a zeal, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Again, I'm gonna file right in. Board control pretty mediocre for the blue team. They're even on a scuttle right now. King is, is so strong right now with his frozen heart. The Talia doesn't do that much damage at this point in the game, so he can just walk up whenever he wants. All right, he's walking up right there. They're going to find the Barrel. three man engage. Barrel sets him up on the backside. Death is a rocket jump away, though. Will they find these kills? Style comes in. Kai is good for one. It's traded back and forth. They got to blow. And they're going to have Kiaya get a second now as well. Style will drop. A 2v3 on the map now. Better than maybe expected. Diving back in for more. Stun's gonna land. The rocks help a ton, but over the wall goes Barrel. And Cowdy in the wrong spot to help this one. Flashing Ooh. over. Ulti comes across. They get a second kill. A third, I should say. But now he's been left alone. Again, it's still plus one. Zekka is unstoppable. Wow. You Gam actually played that fight so close, but they are just not rewarded for it. They end up losing four. Based on the gold going in, you would expect that fight to go a lot worse. Massive engage from Barrel at the start, and then it got super scrappy. You can see Barrel, Rel engage is so powerful, but I want to see how the Marines actually countered this up. So they get Levi, Talia, and then, okay, so Zek is a little late to the fight, and they also get a massive amount of damage on a Piosik early, which burns the Kindred ult. Then death from over the wall, while he does avoid the Leona ult, gets straight in range of Kiaya and Style, so they're able to jump over and kill him first. And yeah. it's a flip. Oh, stolen by Levi, can he get out though? Stunned up and shut down. That is money in the pocket though. That was not just a steal, it was an objective bounty. That is how much DRX is winning this game by. So 500 extra gold goes to the inventory. Okay, there's the Rift Herald. Zekka's getting really, really strong. Oh, we yeah. talked about Def's turret plates. Uh, Zekka has seven kills. So he's gonna be getting a mid eyes fairly soon, I'd imagine. And this mid turret should be breakable. Down it goes. Gold shared amongst them. As they push in to get the wave. They love to get this charge. And current health bar should just barely land once you get the I plus a spike. Yeah, but now with it turning around to that wave. Drop this. Playable, if you time the auto. Yeah, there you go. They're not gonna defend it, so not gonna be an extra charge. Mid lane inhibitor turret will stay at full HP. The camps can still be stolen away. Now, probably a little bit of a lull here, is they're likely just gonna pick up all the farm they can, reset. But what we talked about earlier, Freak, this being the last game of essentially group stage one, yeah. right? So the first round Robin will be completed for every group stage. Kind of crazy that every LCK team. Oh, I don't know oh, if they had Merc Treads or if that ulti was just late, but you should often be able to hit confirm all the CC together, but has the time to crash down away, and there's no kill. Yeah, every LCK team, if DRX can finish this one out, will be two and one, which is, which is interesting because coming into the World Championship, 25 of 26 Korean group stage teams since 2014, so since we've had the same group stage format, 25 of 26 have actually made it to quarterfinals. That's way better than any other region. It's an absurdly high percentage. And even though there's no 3 and O's, which is often, yeah. there's often a 3 and O for an LCK team, every single LCK team will still be in striking distance to win their group. So no matter what happens, if you're able to go 2 and 1, you can still win the group. Because the team that is 3 and 0, you can just beat them the next time. You'll have a tie at 5 1. You can beat them in the tiebreaker again and take it. So after having one of the worst days in LCK World's history on day two, when they lost all of their games, the region overall has just done such an amazing job staying stable and bouncing back. It's really good. Definitely impressive and incredibly consistent region, as you mentioned, the, the pretty monumental, like 94% hit rate at quarterfinals like that. Is it's absurd. Really good. <laughs> when, when the meme will come in, it's like, okay, well, one LPL team's gonna crash and burn. Probably yeah. many LCS teams will crash and burn. We'll see what happens with Mad Lions and co, but the LCK, so consistently amazing here. And once again, DRX taking care of business. 6,000 gold ahead now. I'm looking for a little bit more now. Baron is up, and I mean, it's two out of death. They'll have no problem attacking this. I know, they got double Kraken Slayer plus Orn Silas if they need to peel, so they can just start. Um, Zekek doesn't even need to be here. He's a, such a small percentage of their Baron damage. He can steal a good ultimate over the wall if he needs to, and I think this is just burnt. Information gained. They get a glimpse of 4,000 health. Yep, it's dead. See ya. We'll get mid wave. 
would like a bounty on mid lane, but they're not even pushing for it that hard. Levi doesn't even auto it as Barrel takes oh. the wave. Baron is shown to be dead, and he might be too far up. To Leo, Ornold, here we go. Is it going to be a fight? A triple knockout. A lot knock of CC. Blast. Hello, oh, Barrel. Done, but Barrel okay. dies for it. A bit too early. Levi can be the target, though. Pushed around. Gets the knockup. This is maybe a fight to be won. A shutdown comes across on a horn. Gam goes 2 0 in the battle. Barrel saw the group and said, I'm going. Oh, okay. I can jump in time, though. That's the problem. There's always enough time. Death has the hands for it. And that might mean a bunch of kills. Reed gets your 3v5. For a stun, 3v5. Zekka is good for two. Death will get the third. Unless W comes up. Flash. W. Oh, he stopwatches it. Zekka will be a target, but he burns his own stopwatch. And they're going to re-engage. A three versus five. And they'll kill four. They'll kill more. The inhibitor turret's going to drop. The inhibit itself is rubble as well. Zekka is popping off. Two are down. He teleports back. He re-engages the fight. And they're going to take more. They're going to look for what they can. TP and Otto the minions keeping those alive. Nexus turret will drop, but maybe that's all they're going to get here as Orn is in. No, the respawns aren't here just yet. A 3v5 becomes the Nexus. Style can't stop them. DRX took that personally. A 23-23 victory. What an acceleration of the game state there by DRX. 10, 1, and 2 for Zekka. He has been performing so well all the way through play-ins, now into groups, and he moves DRX into week two with style. That was impressive to decide. You know what? We've got what it takes. I like the idea, hey, we're 5v3. What if Deft isn't ready? What if he doesn't <laughs> rocket jump in time? We kill him, 5v2, we get it. But the Alpaca gets himself another win. It was a lane kingdom in the bottom side. It didn't feel it like was. it was about them since the game started 3-0 from top jungle mid doing stuff. Yeah. And the end of the game was like, well, yeah, he's he's ahead on Silas. He's going to do Silas things. But bot lane was a lane kingdom. And the top side just had control the entire time as well. Yeah, I can see the analyst desk frantically running back to their stations because that game definitely yeah. ended before people expected it to. It did. We're like, oh, yeah, DRX is just casually taking Baron. And less than a minute later, the game is actually over. <laughs> it's so quick how that happened. And to your point, I do understand why Gam was going to take that fight. They, From minute one, they were in a position where they needed to take a lot of risk. And time and time again, DRX didn't concede the ground. They were always ready to go in for the counter fight and yep. just out executed Gam the whole time to go two and one. Completely did. I mean, it was really, really good stuff that Zeka just chain healed through everybody, was like stacked up, was huge, and, and, and just did such a good job. I mean, he was one of their better performers domestically. We looked at him in planes and he was smurfing the entire time, and it's, he hasn't really missed a beat here. Like, yeah, he's oh. had some tough games. I mean, I think, you know, Larson outperformed him in the, in the, the rogue game, but 12K, yeah, yeah, highest in the game. Damage is always low in 23 minute games because you don't get these big, long late yeah. game team fights where you can do like 10,000 damage in one fight. But seven turrets to zero is the big thing here. The Tristana had pushed the whole time. The Jax was never able to push the Orn. Silas got the Rift Herald from uh, the Kindred who had so much lane pressure because he was just able to play through the Trist Pryo the whole game. So it, what's really interesting about these two DRX wins that we've had is they've just had such good macro in them. Right? Yeah. Like once they get the lead, they're so, so good at setting up the right vision, getting these very low looking damage numbers at the end, but having very decisive victories. Yeah, I mean the fact is they they you know they were set up for these. Like, okay, there was a Drake steal, right? Like Hey, kudos to Levi, it's a good smite, right? Well done, they couldn't get a Graves outside the pit, okay, fine, but the gold lead just kept going down to the right because they were always with pressure, right? 7-0 on turrets. Okay, sure, four of those were the very last push, but like yeah. they had the tempo going, it was really well done by DRX the whole time. And we've had a lot of fun here in New York, of course, we are stopping down for a couple of days before we do the second round robin. But if you can't make it at San Francisco to watch the World Finals in person, you can always watch on the big screen with friends and family at select theaters near you. Use the QR code below to grab your tickets. I gotta say, viewing parties are a lot of fun, even if you can't be there in person. Obviously, being here in person, awesome as well. Thank you all very much for being here. It's I was going to try and use the QR code on our program monitor oh, to see Just... if it worked. I wanted to see what the website looked like. <laughs> our program monitor is right there, by the way. I've nerded out over QR codes before, and I know they're like five-year-old technology, but they're so cool. They are really cool. <laughs> he just auto-links for, yep. for cameras, but yeah, that's it. That's it. It was really that's well done. Point. So every LCK team, two and one in striking distance of first in their group. And we do have a 0-3 in every single group as well, Gam. True. The LCS with that honor.
We'll see what else comes through to that one. We are joining Shox and Translator G-Sun on stage with Pioshik for our Verizon post game interview. Thank you very much, as uh, the fans are cheering very much for Pioshik. And of course, why not after that victory? Pioshik, um, congratulations. I uh, saw that you went for Kindred, which I know is maybe probably your favorite champion ever. But why was it a good pick in this situation? Pioshik 선수 이번 경기에서 Kindred 플레이하셨습니다. Pioshik 선수의 아마도 최 챔피언이 맞을 것 같은데 오늘 이 상황에서 Kindred 플레이하신 이유가 뭘까요? 어 이제 제가 킹드레드를 되게 자신 있어 하고 또 요즘에 그부가 많이 나오는데 아무래도 그부 상대로 제가 킹드를 좀잘 하다 보니까 그냥 감코진 분들한테 어 되게 어필을 많이 했던 것 같아요. So I'm pretty confident in Kindred, and also we are seeing a lot of Graves in the jungle right now, and I know how to play Kindred into Graves, so I was pretty vocal about this pick to my coaching staff. Okay, it worked out, and now we know uh, that Gam can be very aggressive. Even when they're behind, they will try to fight you. So how did you make sure that they didn't come back into this game? 이제 상대한 팀이 워낙 공격적이고 지고 있을 때도 계속 적극적으로 교전을 펼치는 팀인 만큼 이번 경기 하면서 어떤 점을 염두에 두면서 이제 상대가 역전할 수 없게 해야겠다 하셨나요? 어 이제 게임 시작하기 전에는 상대가 아무래도 초반에 되게 잘 했다 보니까 그쪽으로 잘 막는 쪽으로 생각을 하고 들어갔는데 1레벨 어찌어찌 잘 돼가지고 그냥 이대로 게임 굳히면은 우리가 충분히 유리하다 이런 식으로 콜 나왔던 것 같아요. So at the beginning, we were aware that they're going to degrade in the early game. So we were ready to actually take the hits, but we actually went through, got through the early game really well. So we were like, if we solidify this lead, we will be able to pick up the win easily. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the group stage so far, uh, it's been a bit up and down, if I may say so. But then you had a fantastic victory also over top. But what are your general thoughts as to how this group is playing out? 이제 그룹 스테이지 1라운드 마무리 하셨잖아요. 어떻게 보면 또 오르락 내리락 했다고 볼 수도 있고 탑 이스포츠 상대로는 또 화끈하게 승리 가져오기도 했는데 돌이켜 보면 그룹 스테이지 1라운드 어떠, 어땠던 것 같나요? 어, 저희가 첫 경기 아쉽게 져서 졌가 졌어 가지고 두 번째 경기 때부터 이제 TES 상대하느냐고 골머리 아팠는데 다행히 어제 잘 이기고 오늘도 어, GAM이 영승 2패지만 되게 보여준 전략이나 그런 게 대단했어 가지고 긴장을 많이 했는데 다행히 2승 1패로 이겨 가지고 너무 좋은 것 같습니다. So it's a bummer that we started off the group stage with a loss. So we were having so much headache preparing for the top esports match. But it's, I was so relieved that we were able to get the win against them. And then we were also so worried about this matchup against Gam Esports because their strategy, their gameplay is also really on point. So I'm really happy with the 2-1 score right now. And I think that's a, a great score to go into the next phase. Thank you so much, Pioshek. And thank, thank you, you Jisun, for your hard work this group stage so far. And we will head over to World's Cooldown. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what a day, what a day. We just had the most intense uh, <laughs> like, photo session. That? Yeah, <laughs> it was a carousel, a conveyor belt of, of photo taking opportunities there. Uh, but we close it out with a DRX win over GAM Esports. How are you feeling over there with your emotional support, <laughs> Alpaca? We got um, some of the most iconic champions for every single player on this team. So we got Kingen on Orn, the pick that he looked incredible in the beginning of the summer. We got Pioshik on his namesake, champion. Yeah, yeah. It's... Shout out to Lyric. Without Lyric, the... I don't think DRX would have gone too... Uh... No. So, yeah. Well, it, got, it wouldn't but, have happened. But on the point... Okay, there was this level one and they will get to in one moment. I was going to say, you mentioned we get the Kindred, the namesake for Pioshik. And while you did roll a 12 on the D20, we all know, Plus eight modifier for that. So oh yeah, basically a twenty, and it was it was all sealed up right there. Yeah, and unfortunately for uh, Gam Esports, they had a negative two on the perception because it feels <laughs> like every time they go for these invades, it just doesn't work out for them. This is maybe the second or if not third time that we've seen them take fights, especially against like, top esports. We've seen it now against the Rx, where they go for these early invades and they massively backfire. And it just feels like because of that, Gam Esports never really get themselves a, a decent footing in the game, so they can actually fight toe to toe against people. It feels like the game has been decided within the first five to ten because I actually like their team fighting. It starts off with a very good engage by Barrel and then a follow-up, but regardless, if you're not as far behind as they were, look at the use of space. Look at Style being able to still find backline access. I think there's opportunities there, but because at this point, um, so many people on DRX are already fed. They're like, even if you do kill Deft, even if Barrel does go a little bit too deep, then it still doesn't really matter. 
And it's definitely tough. Makes, it makes games like this hard to evaluate. While it's great to see DRX get it done when they are, uh, you know, picking up early kills like that, you want to see them close it out relatively cleanly and in a decent amount of time. The game didn't extend too long. It was relatively mistake-free from the side of DRX with that lead. And so, great, that's good to see. But to your point, I just want to see Gam on even footing at 15, 20 minutes and 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 see how the games go at that point. Yeah, because we can even see here, like, this fight, at least at the beginning, was kind of like, oh, maybe Gam are starting to turn this around. Maybe we can actually get Stalin into a position. But because you already had this massive gold lead for DRX, it was just never really the opportunity. I think Gam are their own worst enemy in that they try to overforce. I think if they have a little bit more faith in themselves and take it a little bit slower, um, there might be more opportunities there because I understand the willingness and we saw this actually pay off for Flying Orsa to go for a very aggressive composition or try to look for these invades, but going in there on DRX when there is a fat Silas and you're not sure you can hunt it to zero him, especially when it's Zekka who has been performing so well the entire tournament, is just a really big risk. And, and I was jokingly saying, you know, did DRX close these out? I don't know, 35, 40 minutes. You because, promised me a 40 minute game. Because they are a slow team. <laughs> but then uh, Dagda said, knowing uh, my own team better than I apparently, mm -hmm. um, don't don't you go to the I'm LPL 50 joke. I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm right. making sure. Right. Um, then Gam kind of gave him an opening. And if you do that, the RX is very quick to pounce. Well, there you have it. Oh, did you have a final point on this? No, I just wanted to nod at the camera for, yeah, they are LPL 50, that's all. Okay. Yeah. We, just <laughs> had to, we just had to hold the sign, <laughs> yeah, yeah. too, about the LPL 50. <laughs> Here, we're taking a moment to remember the performance of Rogue today as they hit 3-0 in their group and still maintain sole possession of first place. It was all about Malrong and Trimby, that dynamic duo, jungle support, playmakers across the map. And the level of play from Rogue, as well as their diversity in draft and how well everyone on this roster seems to be performing, I think, is such a great way for this organization to set themselves up for a wonderful uh, second week of groups. And I think as well for Rogue, the fact that they're coming in and playing the exact same style that they played in the LEC speaks wonders to why they're looking so good at the moment as well, right? They looked and said, hey, look, Trimby having these uh, some things, things like the Rakan, but also like the Soraka, the Enchanter, like being able to play his style. You still got Mauron going for these hyper-aggressive Verdi games. Oh. Uh, Arodo Omne playing for the uh, the Melkais, the tank style as well. It's a very simple, well, not simple, but it's, it's a well executed game plan that Rogue are well used to. And that's why I think we're seeing that Rogue are popping the hell off and having that 3-0 score. And, and they seem to know what they want to play and how to play it. That for me has been one of the keys to success for teams here at this tournament. It, when the meta is so wide, you just got to hone in on what you want to play, stick to your guns. Let's take a look at the standings. Obviously, Group A, a very tight race between the three teams all tied at two and one. Edward Gaming, Fnatic, and T1 Cloud9 still hunting for their first win. JDG, they've got sole possession of first over in Group B with Dom Wong Kia currently in that two slot to get out of groups and make the knockout. Rogue, as we mentioned, 3-0 top their group. DRX with that win, they moved to 2-1, and one, also in position to make the knockout stage. And then we'll close things out with Group D, Royal Never Give Up, and Genji in the 1-2 position. Still plenty, though, that can be decided as we have a whole nother round robin to go. I do want to make a note, though, on LEC and EU's performance. While we've been kind of tracking regional records, 6-3 and three as a record is the best in history for Europe coming out of the first round Robin. So what a tournament they've been having for themselves so far. It's been absolutely immaculate. I mean, the fact that you have two of your teams stopping the groups is looking really, really good. And I think as well for for uh, a lot of people who are kind of like talking about, hey, LPL and LCK are the two big dogs coming in. To see the LEC going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them so consistently just speaks volumes to the region as a whole. And why these teams are actually looking so good is because they're playing towards their own styles. They're having great team fights. It looks overall like LEC are a force to be reckoned with at this tournament. All right, they're a force to be reckoned with. I want to play a little bit of a game. We brought the whiteboards okay. back out. There, as there we I got a couple of yeah. pens. The yeah. results, yeah, thank you very much. As we have the results for the first round, Robin, I I wanted to do some predictions for how we think the second round robin will go. And ultimately, what I want to do is go through each group one at a time. And I want each of us to write down the two groups we think are going to advance out of that group. Okay, so we'll start okay. group A. A reminder, we got three teams tied for two and one. I want you to write down your first seed and your second seed in order. So you're also predicting the seed here, okay? okay. And then we're all going to reveal together. I know, I already know where I'm going on this one. I love you too, whoever said that. <laughs> I mean, I love all oh. of you. You're all incredible. Uh, okay, I'm ready to reveal. Are you guys? Just, just group A. 
Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Ready? Ready? You wrote it so small. I'm trying Three, to... two, oh, one. Boom. <laughs> Fnatic is my number oh. one. I am loving the way that they're playing. I think that this team has been underestimated by many, and I think the momentum of this week one is going to carry them through. I think they're going to pull out possibly a 3-0 in the second week to get the first seed. I'm going with T1 after that. It's hard mm. to root against or vote against Faker, if I'm being honest, especially when he's back on North American soil, because there some, seems to be something magical about when he comes to our region to play for a world championship. But you, on the other hand... Are knocking, you're kicking Fnatic out of Group A? So, I'm looking at what happened in 2021, where EDG didn't get off to the best of starts. Even when you look at them coming out of the group stage, they didn't look so hot. And suddenly, they were able to pick it up as the tournament went on. Especially when you look at people like JJ and Flandre. They took a little bit of time to find their footing, and it feels like it's kind of a similar story in this tournament, where they just need a bit of time, and eventually they'll pop off to that success they had right, in 2021. So, he says, defending world champs take the one seed yeah. out of Group A. Chronicler, did you already... Uh, I already... It was, it was two in EDG. <laughs> I, I, I have faith in my uh, okay. in my number two seed. Fair T1. enough. Mm -hmm. Fair Even enough. Even though they've copped a couple of losses, when it comes to their wins, they're so dominant that I think once they fine-tune it, they should be a dominant force in that All group. right, let's hop on over to Group B, and if I could steal an eraser from one of you, that would oh, be... Oh, I, I, I have the eraser, big boy. so don't I don't you, have to don't mess you, up my hands. Thank well, you so much. That, that actually sounds funny. No, I don't want to do that. Come <laughs> okay. on. Thank you so much. All right, Group B. <laughs> let's see. Who do you guys think is getting out of Group B? A reminder, that's JDG, Dom1, Kia, G2, and EG. All right? I think... This one, to me, actually feels like one of the easier groups yeah. to predict. I, I imagine you two are on uh, yeah, I the, think we can, the same we can, page. Boom. I don't think we have Quick to. Quick reveal. We have to, yeah. Okay. I think we're all just so we don't think anything changes in this group. That is going to be JDG, then Dom Juan. Kia, here's, my, here's the one clarifying question. Do you think JDG stays undefeated and they end 6-0? No. Or are we going to get like a tie break no. with... Uh, oh. You don't. You think I don't, gonna I don't drop think one. any. I don't think any team is going to stay undefeated. Uh, personally, I, I don't Ooh. think JDG have been dominant enough. I think we've seen a lot of the jitters that we kind of looked at in the LPL. Because the big thing when looking at this team was that although they were dominant in series, they weren't that dominant in game score. Which is why I think JDG will the more. Oh, come on, <laughs> flaming hot <laughs> take, flaming hot take. Every time I speak about the LPL, but yeah, I think it's still going to be a case of like we'll probably see them drop a game to uh, to Dom one, and that's when we'll actually end up with uh, an actual fierce battle for that first place but I still think JDG will take it. We have the best producers. <laughs> the absolute best producers. Okay, on to Group C here. We got Rogue, Top Esports, DRX, and Gam. All right, let's go ahead and make our predictions on this one. Ooh, this, see, this group, I think, is tough. Very, very tough. Okay. Oh, oof. Okay. This was tough. This, the, uh, this Chron was tough. Chronicle is going to hate me for this. Ah, oh, that's fine. I already know that you ain't going to have faith in my alpaca, but he will... Persevere. Are you ready? Us. Ready for the reveal? <sighs> I've already revealed. Here we go. Oh. No! That's way worse! <laughs> <laughs> That's why I knew you were going to hate this. I think DRX, be, mostly because, how of, how, you, mostly how because of how little that? you believe in them, I believe in them, okay? <laughs> and I think DRX, I think what I think I'll we're going to look at here, we're going we're gonna to end up in a 5-1 tie, oh. is what I think is going to happen oh, between, these love two, between these two teams. And I think DRX is going to win out in that tie over Rogue. But I do think Rogue is going to get through. My concern for top esports is just the hole that they're yeah. Right? It's as simple as that. Just mathematically, I'm a little worried. I'm not going to lie. There's a large portion of me here that is voting with my heart because yeah. I really want to see Knight do well. Like, yeah. this guy has been overperforming the LPL for so long. We haven't got to see it in the international stage. I still think he's playing fantastic at the moment as well. I want to see him get what he deserves and moves on towards the playoffs. But it does rely on a lot of the team stepping up. But they could do it for week two. Yeah, I noticed, again, you were quick to erase. But I'm going to assume you put DRX as number one in the group. No, second. Yeah, yeah, I saw second. it. DR no, okay. DRX. So no, they're DRX. still getting out. Yeah. It's just yeah. two DRXs yeah, get yeah. Out of, to get out of that yeah, group. Yeah, Rogue, <laughs> I think <laughs> Rogue, no, I actually agree. I think it might end up being a tiebreaker. I think Rogue has just earned the vote of confidence after Fair enough. But they look. And uh, unlike with some of the other teams, I think Fnatic are very hot and cold. G2, to me, seem a little bit more reliant on draft. I think Rogue all around just look really good. So okay. they get my confidence. But of course, I'm going to always go with the Rx. So One more group to go. And that's Group D, RNG, Gen G, CFO, 100 Thieves. Let's go for it. Ooh, the, actually, this group is kind of tough, too. I guess, well, maybe not as tough, actually, now. All right, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, 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 I got a piece of it at Dagda's whiteboard. This is great. Okay, three, two, one. 
Uh, <laughs> RNG is going to get third. Yeah. Flaming hot take. <laughs> Flaming hot take, but they're still going to get out of the group. Uh, I'm going for RNG, Genji. I don't think a lot's going to change in this group. I think it's going to pretty much match what we've seen so far in yeah. the second round. Robin, it looks like you think the same. Explain to me, though, how RNG gets third and also makes it out of the group. Uh, it's magic, honestly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what. That's all it is with RNG. Okay. Yeah, you just got to believe sometimes, you know? Magic. Do you believe in magic? Okay, but no, no copyright <laughs> strikes. Okay, moving on. <laughs> the, that was a fun prediction game. From here, I want to refresh on the meta because once again, we've added another champion to our presence graphic. We're up to 101 unique champions picked and banned with the Kindred in that last game. And so that leaves us uh, 60 uncontested champions left in the pool as possibilities to go at. And so we're gonna refresh on what those 60 champions are here. These are all the ones that have not seen a ban, have not seen a play at the World Championship. Which of these 60 do you think either deserves a look or that you just selfishly really want to see? So what I what I think is legitimately good in the right situations mm -hmm. and should be uh, looked at, and I'm not voting with my heart here, is Carfus and Fiddlesticks. Okay. Um, I think the meta has shown that there are a large variety uh, of drafts that is viable. And I think we have seen some opportunities where our teams go for a lot of scaling and a jungler that can really punish that, that isn't Graves, who often gets banned away, I think has an opportunity to shine. So I'm going to give a shout out to some of the boys backstage. So Jat, obviously, with his Corky, he's been really wanting to see that one. Yeah. Kadrill has been singing from the high heavens about Kane as well, especially into picks Ooh. like the Maokai. So I think that could potentially be one. Uh, I actually think the Twisted Fate. I think Twisted Fate has a really good time when he's able to play in towards things like, you know, carry junglers, like a, a Hecarim or a Graves or these sorts of things. So I imagine that we'll probably end up seeing so him at some stage try to fit into one of those compositions, especially, say, for a team like RNG with Shao, who I think will see. Key, yeah. yeah. I, got, I got to wonder if just more enchainers come out. Uh, again, kind of stealing from a couple of the other guys as well. Freak talking about Janna as a response to True. something like Yumi, possibly. Otherwise, you have Soraka Sona. Or Soraka has been played, but Sona, not just yet, would be curious about that one outside of that though uh, I'm not really sure how much more we have left to get through in these 60 champions that's really oh I would be interested in a pocket Vagar from somebody Diana Yasuo Diana Yasuo Diana Yasuo oh, please please <laughs> oh, give me Diana, Diana Yasuo I would absolutely yeah, love to yeah, who, yeah. who plays it Domon would Domon Domon Kia would all right well now I want Domon to win worlds <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board. Hell yeah. Okay, there you have it. That's the end of our first round, Robin. Let's take a look at our schedule for the Thursday of this week, October 13th. We've got Fnatic versus Cloud9, a rematch. Well, they're all rematches, to be fair, to kick things off. T1 versus Fnatic will pop up. Two round rematch. Two round Robins. <laughs> two round Robins. That's exactly how it works. Okay, T1, Fnatic after that. Cloud9 versus Edward Gaming. Smack dab in the middle of the day. This is an important reminder, as you see, Fnatic and Edward Gaming in that third game having to play again. We finish each group on a day, as opposed to the way that the first round robin breaks out. So it'll be T1 versus Cloud9, and then Edward Gaming once again against T1 to close out group A. That's about it. That's about all we got. We're going to take a couple days rest. We're going to shut down the arena, but we want to make sure that those of you at home are aware of this message. Engaging online is a part of all of our lives, and Riot Games is partnering with Idio to re redefine what healthy online spaces can look like through the Designing for Digital Thriving Challenge. Now, through November 1st, we're asking fans worldwide to submit your innovations, designs, or ideas that help build healthy online communities, and winning submissions can take home anywhere from five to $50,000. Check out, check out idio.com for more info. That's going to do it from us here. So on behalf of myself, the casters, the entire broadcast crew, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Thursday for more Worlds. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and be good to each other. Be like Chronicler. Be, be good. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the final day of the first round, Robin, here for Worlds 2022. So on her iPad, it says hope with... So does she mean that like someone wins? Like hope, someone wins? <laughs> no, so hope, mean, like... hope G2 wins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like course. G2 is like <laughs> really small. Hey, Yankos is going to get over here. 369 a little bit oh, separated. Oh, gosh. Fully stacked up. Passive is broken. Blitz is going to work it out. That's first blood for Darius. The Weavers will block them all up. And Yonko is massive yet again. And the resets are now starting to come through. You get those down. Hope oh. is doing so much damage. And the resurrection does not seem to matter what. Actually, I forgot the most important part of our speech. Oh, oh, so. Do you... 
G2 has fallen. We won't fall. G LPL can't get to all over us. No. Guys, play later on Varus, okay? Go on Gnar, play go on Gnar. There is a stuffing by there. No, 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 play, go, 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 play. Go, play, go, 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 play, go, play. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. Ah, no. Good job. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, here comes the turret. Out. Yeah, in goes Trimby. That is the quickness getting one onto Mark. Oh, oh my god! god. to close this one out. The inhibitor gonna be taken. Well, G2 would love to see us beat that one. Yeah, they would love to see that <laughs> On my way. G2 fans are not LA fans. True. <laughs> oh, right at the very edge. And now Canyon, it's just gonna be flashing forward. Oh, Impact me. in so much trouble. First blood goes down, but immediately it's gonna be answered. Now Nogri gonna have to get out of there. Flashes and spires under the turret. Empress Divide picked up oh. by Jojo. There's the old forward, but the Berserk comes through immediately after oh. Empress Divides. Both of them coming through at the same time, but someone will obliterate this team fight. The Cloud Soul is picked up as well, and they'll march up the mid lane. Wait, they're screaming RNG? Yeah, bro. They don't know us. I think they're screaming 100 Just thieves. Just wait till we win this game and then see who, what's going they're on. They're yelling 100 thieves. 100 thieves. 100 thieves. 100 teams, 100 teams. Which one will they kill next? A flash in, triple stun for Breathe. A follow through for Ming. And count him, one, two, three. A stopwatch will still signal his fate. And everyone is dead. 100 thieves take too long to find the fight. And RNG fight it for them. They might go for a dive. Back up. They've got the root already. They've got an ultimate in. But Shun's not level six. They're going to try to burn him. And first blood comes through. Second wow. blood instantaneously as well. Rest alive, just barely, but Shun maybe in the wrong spot, trying to kite it out, trying to stay alive. Shield bow pop, Q comes back through, he won't quite die. Finally drops indeed, Lehens, flash to follow, killed off by Rest, but the man is alone. Will there are enough cooldowns? Yes, there's gonna be a lot of damage and he will die. Shut down comes through to Peanut. Only two kills on the one side, four on the other for Gen G. And that will be failed. He'll fall now as well. Lilith comes in on a Chovy. Still tanky enough, though. They cannot find lethal damage. Ulti comes across for a bit. Oh, Looking for the stun combo, and it will not happen. Ruler cleans up the double kill. That is a clean ace. Gen G lose no one.